In this video, we're going to be conducting a couple free fall calculations. We have our three acceleration formulas off to the left in green, and then we have two different 1D free fall problems where we'll get to practice using some different formulas and take a look at some different scenarios. So for our very first one, it says a baseball is popped up at 11 meters per second. What is the maximum height of the baseball? So the very first thing we're going to do for all calculations is always label our known variables. And our goal is to try to get three variables. The reason I say three is because all of these equations have four variables, which means if you have three, then you're able to solve for a fourth, which will either be your answer or going to be a number that you can use to get one step closer to your answer. OK, so let's see what we have for our first problem. It says our initial velocity is 11 meters per second. We always know our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then from there, it kind of seems like I don't have much information. Now, if you don't have your third number, then you want to try to see if you can identify if there is a zero in the problem. You can use a zero if one, the object is dropped from rest, or two, if it comes to rest at the peak of its flight. So it says, what is the maximum height of the baseball? Now, anytime something reaches its maximum height, its final velocity at the very, very peak is always zero. Okay, so make sure you keep that in mind when you're doing free fall type problems. If you feel like you're missing stuff, you for sure have your acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then if you feel like you're still missing something, you probably have a zero somewhere in there. All right, so I'm looking for the maximum height, which is our delta y, our displacement in the vertical direction. So I know for sure that I want to use this second formula or the third formula because the first one doesn't even have a delta y in it. As I take a look at each of my formulas, it looks like I want to use the third formula because the second one has time. So if I did actually pick that one, by the time I got to the part where I had to plug in a time, I would get stuck and probably realize that I need to use this third one. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. So I would just went ahead and set it up and simplified it a little bit just by squaring my numbers and combining my two times negative 9.8. And then from there, I just have a couple of steps of algebra and then I have completed the problem. There you go. I have completed my two steps of algebra. I subtract 121 from both sides and then divided both sides by negative 19.6, which left me with a delta y of 6.17 meters. Seems like a reasonable answer. It's positive because the ball rose up in the positive direction from the ground. So everything seems to check out. Now for our second problem, it says a penny is traveling down at seven meters per second. How fast is it traveling after it falls for an additional two seconds? And then NAS, how far has it traveled during this time? So the first thing I wanna do is label my variables just as I did on the first one. 
and it is already moving in a very, very common error would be that people would make the initial velocity seven meters per second, but because it's traveling down, anything down is considered negative. And then we also know our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, as it always is. And then we, they give us a time of two seconds. So we're looking for the final velocity, so how fast it's going at the end of that two seconds. So I'm going to take a look at my formulas. We have two formulas with a VF, which is the first one and the third one. And it looks like I have everything for the first one, so I'm going to go ahead and set that up and solve for my VF. I have completed my calculation. I set it up in the first formula. I cross multiply the two up and over to the other side, which is basically like multiplying two on both sides. And I came up with negative 19.6. And then because it was VF minus negative seven, that's the same thing as VF plus seven. So then I subtracted seven from both sides and then I got my final velocity of negative 26.6. Seems like a reasonable answer because it is negative and it also accelerated up from negative seven for a couple seconds. So it should definitely be a greater negative number. Now for the next step, I want to solve for my delta y again. Okay, so now I have a bunch of variables because I have the VF. So I have everything I need for the second formula and the third formula. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the second formula because that one doesn't require any algebra. All you have to do is plug in the numbers, pop it into your calculator to get the answer. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I went ahead and plugged everything into my second formula. And like I said, everything from there is fairly straightforward. You just want to be careful that you are including the negatives. You have two negative numbers there, negative 14 and then negative 19.6. When you add those two together, you get negative 33.6, which sounds about right. It is displaced in the negative direction because it's falling down. So because it's displaced moving downwards, we have a negative delta Y. So that completes our two free fall examples. Thank you for watching and listening.